What's happening everyone, Jay Shockblast here, and we're back with another Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 video, and it's not the one that I want to make. Uh, after last week, I'm making a video questioning why we haven't heard anything in over two months about the status of DLC number two, which was promised to be released by the end of 2019. And uh, it looks like the folks at Marvel or Nintendo or someone has stealth updated the eShop, but not in America, in Japan. All right, I'll show you in just a moment the US one, but this is the Marvel Ultimate Alliance uh, DLC pack uh, in Japan. And as you can see, lots of J Japanese, uh, which I don't speak or understand or read, but I can read this, click it. And as you can see right there on the screen, it went from being late 2019 to April 30th, 2020, uh, and the second DLC, July 31st, 2020. What the mudge? What is going on? All right, let's go ahead and look at the US listing. All right, so we have the US version of the eShop opening, and as you can see, we have the the season pass for the black order here and as you can see read more oh, read more it says dlc one is out dlc 2 2019 dlc 3 2020 so i don't know what's going on here but japan seems to have no more than the rest of the world does so I'm not okay with this, and I don't think anybody else should be either. It's it's really not asking much just to keep us updated. If there's something that's gone wrong and you need more time to do a DLC, I think a lot of fans, most fans, are going to be far more forgiving uh, if you just let us know than if we have to find out on our own. Or even worse, where people are expecting this DLC in the next 20 days, there are people that are saying, oh, well, maybe it'll be at the, the Video Game Awards. There's going to be a big announcement. It was announced then last year, and uh, we're going to see something there. You're just setting up people for disappointment, and that's just going to create even more animosity for the situation. And I don't need to tell you guys that. You know this. You're smart people. And, and you know, it just... It's really frustrating because Marvel Games is very active on social media. Uh, they are constantly highlighting all the things that are great about the mobile games and the you know Spider-Man PS4, Marvel's Avengers, all of those things. So for them to not talk about, even promote the Curse of the Vampires DLC post-release. I mean, maybe for a couple days they did, but... Man, it's been two months, and there's nothing about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 out there. Uh, there's a post that came up on Reddit, and uh, Spooky the Bear posted it on my Discord. So I'm going to read that to you in just a moment, and I believe it. I believe it's true. I believe it's real. I believe it's legit, and I believe it based on my interactions with other people that have worked on uh, Marvel-licensed video games in the past. And uh, it's not just one, it's multiple games um, across many different types. So, uh, you know, it's it seems to be a theme. And it's unfortunate because, uh, you know, uh, overbearing is not the way you want to be described. You know, it, it's, it's one thing to protect your IP. Uh, it's another thing to kind of, I, I'm actually quite surprised that with all the changes that are going on in the industry and people calling out poor behavior, uh, that this isn't a bigger deal. But I'm also more surprised because everybody that I've ever interacted with at Marvel Games has been so nice to me and so fantastic. And it really, it's disheartening because I want, I want to support them. I want to believe in them. I want to be an advocate. I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be making this video. This is nonsense. Like, I love Marvel Comics. I love Marvel video games. I have been such a huge supporter of all of these games for so long. I was out there trying to get people to buy into Marvel Heroes and Marvel Heroes Omega. I support all the LEGO Marvel games. I support... I, I've played 
literally any Marvel game that comes out, I buy. All right? I've spent so much money on their mobile games, which is another issue all in and of itself. But let me read this, and we'll unpack it after. So here is what Spooky the Bear posted that apparently was on Reddit. I was waiting for a post like this to pop up. Thought it would be any day now. I worked on Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. It was not a rush product like most people here seem to think. We had a deadline, we had a more than capable staff, and everything went smoothly. The problem was that Nintendo slash Marvel footed the majority of the bill for the game. Many contractors were brought on to meet the de both the deadline and Marvel's very stringent requirements. Uh, once the game was completed about three weeks before its release, all the contractors were laid off and the majority of the remaining Team Ninja personnel were relocated to other projects. I believe that Marvel and Nintendo, which, by the way, rarely had any communication with each other, we were the middlemen, did not believe the game was going to succeed. Marvel is mostly concentrated on their mobile games as they get a huge chunk of that revenue, while Nintendo is concentrated on pushing titles in which they have full creative control. However, the game sold extremely well, and there were talks of bringing back in the contractors to really build upon it. Well, maybe not really talks per se, but more of our team asking for permission. Basically, Marvel doesn't want the game to succeed in the long term. They are completely overbearing in terms of creative control, and they don't have the manpower to support a Switch exclusive. They rather put their efforts into supporting their mobile division. The post mentions Gazillion's Marvel Heroes, in which Marvel itself views as a disaster. So, take that for what you will. I have always heard rumblings that Disney is planning on purchasing Square Enix and its IPs, in which case they'll be the sole pr producers of most console versions of licensed Disney games. Nintendo were basically neutral on Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3's success. It made them money, so they shrugged but it's not something they can view as sustainable in the long term, mainly because of Square Enix being so closely tied to Sony. But for the most part, they just don't give a bleep. <clears throat> None of the DLC was made prior to the release of the game, meaning it's not on disc. So the team still needs to make it. It was a smart decision by us to make the DLC purchasable as a pack and not individually. Honestly, I'm surprised this was even approved by Marvel because it means the le that legally we have to deliver. So you don't have to worry about that. those coming out. They will be released. But sadly, the chance of the game continuing development past Fantastic Four DLC is not bright. Valkyrie, Odin, Nick Fury, Winter Soldier, Ant-Man, Vision, Juggernaut, Mystique, Beast, War Machine, Nebula, Thane, Black Bolt, Medusa, the separation of Rocket and Groot, as well as Cosmo the Space Dog were all planned to be free updates in between the DLC release schedule. So cross your fingers. But the release schedule was supposed to be every other week, and obviously that has not been met. However, I'm unsure the manpower necessary to make this happen is worth the end result. And uh, I would agree with that. As you may have guessed, I'm no longer with the team. I have recently moved on to bigger and better things. However, Team Ninja all capitalized. We like it capitalized, by the way. Our good developers and fantastic people. They would love to fill that void that Marvel Heroes left behind, but they aren't really allowed to. And as such, it was never the purpose of the release. As someone else has stated, this game is a live title. So there's a lot to unpack here. And uh, I've, I'm so cautious about what I want to say next that um, this is like my 10th my take. And uh, it's just frustrating. Um, all we want is some transparency uh, from Marvel games, uh, from Team Ninja, from Nintendo, whoever it may be. Um, you know, you can't delay something and not tell us. Uh, you can't. I mean, Marvel games has like Twitters for every game but this one, it seems. And they're all active. They're all active. You know, Bill Roseman's active. All the Marvel games people are active. And. I want to be an advocate, man. Like, I want to be out here making videos hyping up this game. Helping sell this game. You know, that's why I, I play all the Marvel games. And, you know, it's really frustrating because it's tough. Because I, I feel like 
by making a video like this, I also could face, you know, blacklisting or something like that. And it's, it's, uh, it's definitely impacting the tone that I'm taking, you know, like, cause nobody's taking them to task on this. This is wrong. This is very, very wrong. And it doesn't seem like anybody in the, the mainstream gaming media is going to talk about it. So somebody has to because it's just it's not right that they're not updating this and you know i i look at this uh right i believe it because it's it's very similar to a lot of things i've heard from other people and you know maybe that's by def by purpose and that's why it's fake but i don't know like this this seems seems pretty real and um I guess if uh, Disney ends up buying Square Enix, we'll know for sure, um, because that seems like uh, information that, uh, yeah. So um, I don't know, man. Like, I don't think it was ever reasonable to expect all those characters to be free. You know, I'm not a game developer. I don't know anything about game development, uh, but I visited enough studios and interacted with enough people to know that uh, you know when you start introducing you know, these characters or these other variables into the engine that they're going to have reactions and sometimes they're not good. Um, so, you know, it's something I get it that they have, you know, character models in the game, like in cutscenes, but that doesn't mean that, you know, they're instantly, you know, able to just throw them in the game and have it work. Like there's work that goes along to it. So like expecting it to be free, I don't think is reasonable, but I don't think any of us would have had the free expectation if they hadn't released Cyclops and Cable, not Cable, um, Colossus for free. And, you know, we just want to play the game and enjoy it and play as many characters as we can. And I just don't understand the purpose of putting this game out if you didn't expect it to be successful. I don't think Team Ninja was the right studio. I don't, I've, I've said all along that you know doing it as a switch exclusive was bad um you know team ninja i'm not saying they're the wrong studio because i think they're bad i think that they make good games but i don't think this was the right game for them because now they're not supporting it they're putting people on other projects many projects that they have and you know this game this franchise needs a studio that's going to love and nurture it i mean i know like this is one of my favorite franchises ever, okay? And it's for the same reason I love Marvel Heroes. You have so many options of characters to play with. And I just feel like another studio could have, you know, given it the time, given it the dedication. You know, I would have had no problem paying extra for new characters just to make sure we got new characters. Like, that's reasonable. I and mean, just make the price reasonable. The reason they want to focus on mobile games is because the pricing structure is unreasonable. It's awful. Like, I just paid $50 the other day to get the worst version of Heimdall in Marvel Strike Force. And I'm not saying that because anybody should feel bad for me, because nobody held a gun to my head and made me buy it. But, like, at the same time, psychologically, there's a reason why these mobile games with all the microtransactions work. And I'm actually a proponent of microtransactions. In general, I don't have a problem with them. But I just wish that like they were more price appropriate. I don't feel like I should be paying $50 to barely unlock Heimdall and barely be able to use him. It's Heimdall. It's not even like Deadpool or a primary character. And every time something like this comes out, whether it's Strike Force or Future Fight or whatever, I say to myself, I'm not going to spend money this time. I'm not going to spend money this time. And then I do it anyway because I can't help myself. And again, don't cry for me. All right. I'm not. That's not the point of my story. You know, like I, I'm an adult and I make financially bad decisions just like anybody else. And these are my financially bad decisions because... I mean, I do play the games and enjoy them, you know? Like, I have no problem supporting developers, but, like, I've spent a ton of money on all of their microtransaction-heavy video games, whether it be Contest of Champions or Strike Force or Future Fight or Marvel Heroes slash Omega. 
or you know I've spent a little bit of money on battle lines and they also have a uh, puzzle quest and now they're ha they've got another mobile game they're about to have six active mobile games and there's a reason for it you know which is why I, I buy everything that they say here you know like this all makes sense and it's all it's all frustrating so you know uh, all you had to do is say look you know we've we've got some delays you know, the DLC is not going to be out by the end of the year. We need to push it back. I think people would have been a lot more understanding and forgiving. But by hiding it, by making us, like, dig up the info, by, like, shadow updating the, the Japanese listing, it's not right, guys. Come on, you're better than that. You're all good people. Um, I don't know why you felt like you had to do this, you know? Like, I don't feel like... I just don't understand, like, if a Nintendo wants to have full control over stuff why are they trying to get exclusive games that they're just going to be like ah we made money you know I guess that's it they made money you know that's all that matters but like we are real people and we want to love these games we want to support these games we want to play these games and I feel like that's what all these business people are doing they're just playing games with us and taking our money and uh that's not how I want to feel about Marvel, man. I love Marvel. I love Marvel comics. I love Marvel movies. I love Marvel collectibles. I love Marvel video games. Everything about Marvel. I'm like Team Marvel. My dog's name is Thor, okay? My next dog will be named Nova. Like, this is this is the way. <laughs> um, but this, this is disheartening. Uh, so, I, I really, like, honestly leading people on and and just not updating them it's gonna make it worse when you finally actually come out and say it. Um, there are people that are gonna watch the video game awards on Friday and they're doing it expecting or hoping to see some kind of an update like a DLC update you know or a trailer or something updating it. and like it's Again, nobody nobody said, hey, this is what's going to happen, but the game was introduced there last year, and we haven't heard anything, and it claims we're going to have the DLC by this year, and this year is running out. There's only 20 days to go, so what else are people going to think? So the longer that this is delayed, like just saying, hey, you know, something came up, and, uh, you know, we're pushing back the release, like the longer you wait to say that, the more frustrated and disappointed people are going to get. And, uh, you know, maybe it's not on the scale of people that freak out over microtransactions in Fallout 76 or Call of Duty or Fortnite or Apex Legends or any of the other games that have all these massive microtransactions. But, you know, we, we are still people that spend money and... I don't know, maybe you guys just think that you're Marvel and you're going to put out a game and we're all just going to buy it. It's probably true. So, what is this all for? But anyway, that's my my 10 cents. Uh, that's where we're at. I think this is the version we're going to keep. Um, I, you know, again, not the video I want to make. I want to be talking. I want, I want my next video to be exciting, saying, hey... We've got an update, you know? Like, it's not a great update, but we got an update. It's official. You know, I want to I wanna have fun. Make fun Marvel videos. Not not this. So, uh, if you could just keep us updated, guys, at Marvel Games. Team Ninja, Nintendo, whoever it is. I don't care who it is at this point. Somebody just tell us what's going on. It's not asking much. It's kind of your job. Let's do this. Alright, we'll see you. Alright, we'll see you.